Hey everybody, this is Roberto Blake of RobertoBlake.com and I'm geeking out with you today over something really awesome. It's going to be my 4K video editing and gaming machine. This thing is something I've been wanting to do for a while, but it's now very practical for me to do it. I'm going to talk about it. So I've got a lot of the parts here. Uh, there's some stuff that's shipping from Amazon. I'm going to have Amazon links to all the parts in the description below for you guys, along with some of the thought process behind this build. I'm not building it on camera here. I want to talk to you guys about it first because there are a lot of you who are getting into 4K video for editing and for business. And I want to talk about why it shows my parts, what I'm doing and why I'm doing a 4K video editing machine instead of just buying a 4K or 5K Retina iMac. So that's what this video is all about. So for me, it's very practical to build a 4K video editing machine because it has nothing to do with my YouTube channel. My YouTube channel is going to benefit from it, but this is part of my business and something that I don't know that you guys all understand or get is that I do a lot of client services for content production and creation. I do a lot of public speaking around that. I do private talks with companies about it and do consulting for them as well as small business clients. So for me, if I'm editing for one of my friends, because I have a lot of friends who are speakers, if I'm editing a reel for them or I'm editing stuff from their last speaking engagement and putting that together and chopping it up for them, then that literally as one gig pays for something like this. So that's why it makes sense for me. So from a business standpoint, this is more about video production and editing and what I want to do as a creator too for other projects that I have that I promised you guys motivational short films, things like that. So that's why I'm building this rig. If you've been following my personal vlogs and my Dear Entrepreneurs vlog, then you know that also I'm embracing some more of my childish escapism. You guys know that I'm a big fan of Star Wars and you know I'm an old school gamer, Mega Man, Zelda, that kind of stuff. But there's a lot of things that have like caught my attention and there are friends who are doing some interesting things. So casually, I might ease a little bit back into gaming. So this computer is going to support 90% of the stuff that I'm doing on the business side from now on. I won't need to buy a new computer for a desktop for years. And then when I casually want to entertain myself, this is gonna be really great for that, for watching videos in 4K and also for playing games with ultra settings. So that's why I'm doing this build. The reason that I just didn't decide to get a four or 5K Retina iMac was for the amount of money I'm spending on this build, which is between 12 and $1,500 including accessories, that would be like a base model stock iMac that I'll never be able to upgrade again. And I won't get all the things that I'm getting with this. Let's dig a little bit into my parts though. I'm gonna tease you guys with this. This is something that I'm gonna unbox and review uh, later as far as a new drawing tablet. Might be a cheap alternative to Wacom. So I'm teasing you guys with that because it's sitting here on the uh, product desk. When you're editing 4K video, speed matters with all your components. So I've got a bunch of Samsung SSDs. I actually have three of these. Two of them are 250 gigs and one of them is 500. And there's a reason for that. I also have two one terabyte Western Digital Blue drives. These are 7,200 RPMs, and these are high speed, and these are gonna be quality for a desktop, and there's a reason that I'm combining these. So for the operating system and the applications like Premiere Pro, Photoshop, all that good stuff, I'm using one of the 250 gig Samsung SSDs. The other 250 gig SSD is for a media scratch disk and for project files. This is your temporary storage and this is your project storage. And the reason you want those things separate is because that's going to really help a program like Premiere Pro utilize those things faster. The media caching is important because the archive of where do I find all of your video files, where do I find all the source files, that's something that takes a while to search through. So you want that on a fast drive. You also want it to be its own thing so that when it's building that library and it's searching through, it doesn't have a lot to go through. You also want to store those source data files on their own hard drive layer as well. And that's where the Western Digital Drives come in because these are going to be those data drives. This is where the actual footage dumped from my cameras is going to go. And there's two of them because it's going to be mirror RAID. It's going to be RAID 1 so that I have a backup of that footage no matter what before I offload it to my remote storage. So that's why two of these, these will be RAID 1 mirrored, and that's why. The last Samsung SSD, the 500 gigabyte, is an export drive, meaning that once I render these files, they're going to their own separate hard drive. The reason to put all these things on their own hard drives instead of just one hard drive is because of what's called internal bandwidth, and that's gonna really help you as far as speed. Just imagine it as lanes on a highway, and that now all of your data and all of your specific types of data have their own lane that they're staying in. 
that's super important and that matters. For video editing, a GPU is important. I went with a um, GTX 970. Uh, so that's the uh, GPU that I went with. It's about 300 bucks. Again, links to everything will be in the description below. The GPU and the CPU should be arriving while I'm out of town on a trip, but they'll be here when I get back. So I'm not gonna put all this stuff together until I get back from travel, guys, because one, I don't need to rush on this, and then two, uh, I'm gonna be doing some more speaking stuff. I'm on two panels at a convention. So um, yeah, I wanna focus on that. I can take care of all this stuff later. But I'm using i7 core processor uh, with 4.4 gigahertz of speed and that's gonna be tremendous for video editing. With Premiere Pro, it's actually less about the number of cores and more about the speed per core, and that's why I went with a quad-core option over a six-core option. So these are true quad-core, and uh, that's awesome. That's gonna be very powerful for the rendering side. And the GPU, the um, GTX 970, that is a 256-bit, so that means that I've got a lot more raw power there in terms of GPU. My render times are gonna be great. My video playback's gonna be great. So that's gonna be really important for this build. I went with uh, Gigabit for the motherboard. I could have went a lot of different directions, but I trust them as a brand. I also um, you know, trust Asus for motherboards as well. But I went with Gigabit knowing what I was doing. And uh, this particular model is about 200 bucks. It's ultra durable. It's the Z97X. UDH, uh, sorry, UD5H. Um, so this is really cool. This is gonna work with that GPU. Uh, it's got the four RAM slots and go 32 gigs of RAM. I'm gonna be using Corsair Vengeance for that. So that's the RAM. I went with EVGA for the power, uh, 750 watts, bronze, three year warranty. This is gonna be tremendous for me. Uh, this build, when I checked it on PC Parts Picker, it's probably only going to use about 500 uh, watts max at any given time but I wanted to have the upgrade capability. If I want to throw a second GPU in there, I can. For 4K video editing in Premiere Pro, the reality is that you really don't get that much more out of SLI and a second GPU. A lot of people think you do, but not for the video editing. Maybe for doing like crazy stuff on gaming, sure. But for me, it's practical to just have the one drive. But if I really want to, I can upgrade to something else crazy later, or I could slap a second one in there. So two video cards. Not necessarily the biggest thing in the world. A lot of people disagree on that, but uh, the reality is everything that Adobe says means that you can get by with one and you'll be more than fine. Between having a really good CPU and a really good GPU and like 32 gigs of RAM like what I'm doing, it's more than enough. So to just break down some of the pricing for you, the Samsung drives that were 256 gigs, 89 bucks. So 90 bucks for each of those. The Western digital drives were only 50 bucks a piece. So between that and then the 150 for the 500 gigabyte Samsung SSD, you're looking at, let's see, 150, 250, and then 180. So you're looking at about $430 just in the storage capacity, but it's because of the way that I want to do it. You certainly could scale all of that down. This is just what makes sense for me, and I decided to go big or go home. Uh, with the RAM, you're looking at 150 bucks. It's not bad. The case that I'm using, the Thermaltech case, that was only 60 bucks. It's got, you know, a lot of great features for it, and it looks cool. It looks like a bloody stormtrooper, and that's what I'm gonna call it. So, uh, you know, this was not the most expensive thing you could build, but, you know, I chose these options because this is something you can save up for. This is something that I think is very practical for most people if you take your time with it and if you buy your parts individually. The other thing is for me, because I'm using this for paid work, I'm gonna make back the return on investment on this very easily. So that's going to be very important for me. Not to mention, I'm gonna buy back my time. Render times for everything that I do for the YouTube channel uh, take up a lot of time. And usually I just walk away when that's going on and I use another computer for something else. This will still mean that I can have maximum productivity and still use my best machine, even while that's going on in the background. So I think that buying back your time is a good way to spend any money and that's part of why I'm doing this. So now you know why I'm building a 4K video editing machine. I'm gonna talk more about these parts in individual videos. I'm gonna give you some more advice about my journey into 4K video editing using uh, my Panasonic camera and the other stuff. I'm actually going to be investing in a Panasonic Lumex G4 
in addition to the G7 that I have. So I'm gonna get the GH4 eventually, maybe by the end of the year after I build out more of the lenses there, because for speaking engagements, it makes sense because that camera does not have the 30 minute time limit. So that makes a lot of sense for me and to be able to shoot in 4K if I really want to and be able to crop in, scale down. For something like shooting a speaker reel where you have the big stage and you have all those things, you could shoot loose and wide with 4K and that makes a lot of sense, especially when you wanna get those close-ups of someone speaking on stage. So that's why an investment in something like that for the world that I'm playing in, for who my clients and my contemporaries are, it makes a lot of sense for me and it's a good way to spend the money. Plus it's a tax write-off. Anyway, that's it for my uh, 4K video editing build. Again, links for you guys in the description below for everything I talked about. Also, I could give you advice on a budget version of a video editing rig, because maybe you don't need 4K video for what you're doing. If you're a YouTuber, you certainly don't need that. If you're an independent filmmaker, you may not need that. I could certainly tell you how to build something for 600 or 700 bucks that is more than good enough. So if that's something you're interested in, let me know in the comment section and I will make that video. Anyway, like this video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out the other awesome stuff on the channel. As always, you guys, thanks so very much for watching and geeking out with me over my new 4K video editing rig that will also get me back into gaming.